with the office of that person. You're dealing with a president. So quite frankly, you can't, it is not appropriate for one politician to start making personal comments about another. You're dealing with the office of presidency. And quite frankly, that's one of the problems with free speech as well. There, there should be avenues for free speech, that's for sure, but not the unregulated, chaotic, self-servient, self-serving way that oh, it absolutely. operates at the moment. You know, we, we, we just don't know how... I mean, our, some of our politicians just don't know how to play the game. I mean, I, I said it in an article yesterday. I said, we're too busy playing drafts while he's playing chess. And what he's done is he's just moved his chess piece. And actually, do you know what? Um, we're now, being, now, we're, now we're paying attention. The difference is, as we said... They are the Western politicians are slaves of political rightness. Donald Trump is not. Therefore, translate slave. We are being controlled. He is in control. Simple as that. Yeah, and and, you, and we, we were talking about this yesterday because you also said he's got no fear. He's not showing any fear in all this. That's his style. He, he, that, that's whether yeah, or not he's you know, president. You know that's I, just I heard, his style. I heard, I heard him four years ago. I, I, I went to a conference he was speaking at. And he stood up on stage. Um, I didn't particularly like his presentation, but there's a, one thing he says, and um, that's what he's lived by. And he says, if someone hits you hard, you hit them back ten times harder. And, he, and he's lived by that philosophy. Every time the media hits him, he hits them back much harder. And they still mm-hmm. haven't learned the lesson. You know, I mean, the thing is, you know, st- you know, he, he, he's branded it. He said it enough times. The thing time. is, because they, to be news, fair, they, news, they, they, they need and to regulate. Begin- no, no. They, they need to legislate against the media. The, the media are out of control, and in fact, the media control government. I mean, let's not let's put it bluntly. The media have an open door policy into Downing Street, into the White House to go and have their coffees and teas, and go to Camp David and do whatever they want because they're the media, well, and the, the, the politicians the, are terrified of them. So good for Donald Trump. Well, I mean, Rupert Murdoch did actually control the election in this country for a number of years years if you think about it of course and they still do and and uh you know i've had i've had um people telling me about uh, uh you know close contacts and clients telling me what their experiences of the media with politics and believe you me they are very close bedfellows and politicians are simply puppets you now know. going 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 back to another thing we we started talking about the media with this podcast and we we gave one example of of how self-serving the media are by publishing an irresponsible article and by vetting the comments that are left and saying claiming that they are unvetted uh we saw another article last week and in fact it was sent to me by one of my clients and uh it was uh I think it was it was in the Sunday paper and it was an article about if you want to be a successful hard charging career woman find yourself a house husband. <coughs> and the article itself was about a lovely family, a really lovely family with five kids, a husband who is a teacher who's enjoying himself living at home and looking after the kids and a woman who is president of some girls student association and is enjoying her career. And uh if you and it, and it says that uh, it says that you know all the men you know who are open minded should feel more able to say they want to be at home and people should respect them and uh, and if you have a closer look, however, at the article, you have the kids and you have the husband standing in the doorway and sitting proudly across what looked like a triumph motorcycle wearing jeans and a close cropped graying hairstyle is a rather chubby woman are you, are you getting stereotypical on this um or oh, what stereotype pops into your mind when i say that well the thing yeah, uh, i've got a the, well the stereotype that does pop into your head is is is, is lesbian correct but but, but, um, but okay so let's focus very carefully here what has actually happened is this of course, the article is nonsense, and they think that it's a politically correct article which is going to encourage readers to buy their open-minded, fantastic publication. It's complete nonsense. What it is, is without knowing it, they've actually underlined the importance of stereotype, because to make even that example work, you still need a male and a female. And all they've done is they switched roles. The female is actually the male and looks like the male and behaves like the male. And even in any, in any homosexual or lesbian relationship, there is almost, not, not always, but almost always, the male and the female. You always need a male and a female. And 
such is the world that most people are average and the average person is going to be a man who's a male and a f- and a woman who's a female and that's how relationships work in other words the female the woman at home and the man the male at work um, well the thing is you kind of i mean the thing is it's very hard to actually have two people in a, in a in a same in the same relationship where one's not actually the more dominant than the other one correct and this is the whole point actually it's probably almost impossible and therefore you need a male and you need a female and in in point one percent of the population which is pr- probably less than that which is what this article uh represented it was working because of that but i can tell you right now i've seen countless families where the man is making less money stays at home and the woman loses complete respect for him and and the thing is because but but what happens and um men will go into what's called their shadow shelves and carl jung talked about this where um in in effect what happens is they um because they actually haven't got control they become quite aggressive they become quite controlling um and and things like this because they are not in control of of themselves in the relationship and um they become in fact you know in in this guy's case he will feel a bit like a weakling and there's something going on there's something going on in his head where that's going to actually impact because i don't think he's totally accepting but i don't think he's a particularly happy guy well again not not unless he's got mummy issues and he wants to be be mothered you see again you could be absolutely right because he'd have to be an enormously psychologically strong and sorted individual to be happy living a stereotype which is the complete opposite to how most of the population function still i mean it could be possible we're not saying it is impossible but then hardly anything well, is well, impossible I, I couldn't do it i remember when my daughter was born she went into she actually went into nursery within weeks actually um yeah probably within weeks because both my wife and i went back to work and the thing is had we actually taken at the, at the time when we were when we didn't when we didn't actually have that much money what happened was that what was costing us a nursery each month was still actually one of our salaries but the problem is by stepping out of that role and actually one of us looking after her it meant that our career further on down the line was going to actually be impacted at the time now obviously life has changed but what i'm but what i'm saying i mean the thing is i'm also happy that she went down that road but that was our choice because she was more socially interactive she was more independent she was more she became very more self-reliant and uh, but we also made sure we gave her the quality time when we had the weekends off and things like that Mm. so that article could have been a very interesting article if it had been written properly but as it was it was completely unrepresentative and sensationalist and and yeah, to, to, to the likes uh, of you and me, I mean, and an the, artificial the, example of political correctness. Yeah, there, there's a few other people out there who say, "Oh, that's great," you know. That you know, some people will will, will like that article. I mean, it's interesting because because they are ignorant and hmm? misinformed. What do you know? What paper that was in? I can't remember. I can find out if you want. No, 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 it's not important because it was interesting that. Um, there was also some news in the new, in in, in the, this week about Virgin Railways, and they used to be, they used to stop the Daily Mail, and apparently they've actually stopped selling the Daily Mail on their trains, um, mainly because they weren't selling that many, and people weren't liking the articles that the Daily Mail were going to it. Because the thing is, if what you were saying is true, that they are condoning things like. Um, alcohol or, or, or alluding to the fact that alcohol, it's, a, it's acceptable to actually take alcohol even if you're an alcoholic because you're a lot happier of course look I'm going to say this about that article of course you're going to be happier because well, when you take alcohol it's a dopamine rush but the thing is it's only short term unless you keep on taking the alcohol and um, in your case he's going then, to die because he, then he almost did die, anyway but you're just numbing your senses so you don't actually have to deal with everyday problems so therefore you're out of control and going to be more yeah. stressed and need more alcohol so I've got to say I, think, I, I still think it's uh, you know it, it, it's about this I, as I said I don't know enough about alcoholism because I'm not do I enjoy a drink yes have I, have I got drunk in my life more than once um, do I drink every day no so I don't actually fully understand the challenges that some people, and it's to do with some of the, I think something to do with grey matter in the head as well, by the way, I don't, in the brain, I don't know enough about it. Um, Has alcohol ever had a bad effect on you? 
Has Uncle ever had a bad effect on me? Have you found yourself doing stuff? Do you, mean, do you, do you mean apart from the time when I see helicopters and I have to sleep with one foot touching the floor because my head's spinning? Yeah. Uh-huh. It's had a bad... Uh, what do you mean a bad effect? Uh, have you ever f- hurt yourself, fallen over? Um, do, do, you know, do you know what, actually? I'll probably... I I'll, 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 I'll never really wanted to admit this, but actually for, for being transparent, I will do. There was one situation where I had gone drinking, um, but the thing is I was, I'd also been training at the gym and I hadn't had enough water, so I was probably dehydrated at the time. And, you know, I was sitting having dinner with friends, and, you know, and, and these friends, we drink an awful lot. And what happened was, all of a sudden, I was fine, and the next minute I stood up and I collapsed. Mm-hmm. And I totally went. What happened after that? Mm? What happened after that? Uh, What what did you do? The next thing I know, I attempted to put my jacket on. I ran out the door. What did you do about your uncle? What did you do about your Um, uncle? Oh, what did I do? Mm-hmm. Uh, the following day, <laughs> the following day is an interesting one. The following day, I went onto the Alcoholics Anonymous website mm-hmm. to actually see, actually, do I actually have a problem? Uh-huh. Because, the but what did you do about time, your alcoholism, mm-hmm. or what did you do about your drinking after that? Mm-hmm. I didn't drink for months. Actually, correct. So therefore, by definition, you don't have an alcohol problem because people with alcohol problem will continue despite yeah. knowledge of harm. And in fact, even the diagnostic systems have changed it now because it used to be a, a little bit more specific, but now they just call it problem drinking, whether you're an alcoholic or whether, you, whether you're not an alcoholic, but you continue drinking because it harms you, because there's very little difference mm-hmm. between the two. Um, and that's the difference. It caused you a problem, you cut it out. And people who can't do that are controlled by their vice. Well, thank you for that. So, do you want to just uh, wrap us up on this one today, Thea? I think I, I think we've we've already done a wrap up, but we'll repeat it, which is this: that uh, enjoy your vices, don't be their slave. In fact, don't be the slave of anything, because, for instance, the the uh, Twitter and the and the internet and uh, and life coaches and psychologists will. And your friends will encourage you to follow your dreams. Never let go of your dreams. It's a very millennial type world that we live in now. But you it? know what? Actually, if you become the slave of your dreams, just the same as being addicted to something, never be the slave of anything. Deal uh, with reality. Deal with reality. Be in control. By all means, enjoy your dreams. By all means, enjoy a drink and a cigarette and whatever else you seek to do in your own privacy. Don't be its slave. Well, thank you for that. And um, I hope you enjoyed this week's session. And what we'll do is we'll catch up with you next week. Thank you very much. And we will have an entire podcast on attention deficit disorder. And that's going to be the next one or the one after. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.